Next for news is also out of Saudi Arabia, two major Saudi oil installations hit by drone strike and U.S. blames Iran. So, yeah, okay, uh, drone strikes that were claimed by Yemen's Houthi rebels. Um, did I pronounce that right? Houthi, <laughs> Houthi. yes. Yeah. Houthi uh, rebels uh, struck two key oil installations inside of Saudi Arabia on Saturday. Okay. Mm. Now, what this is with this damaged facilities that processed one of the most vast majority uh, of the country's crude output, actually of the world, right, of, of mm. the distribution of all the world's oil supplies. So this attack was horrifying, uh, not just to Saudi Arabia. Well, immediately this escalates tensions, right? And uh, the United States, President Trump comes out and says, we've got our missiles aimed we're just waiting for saudi arabia to say they know who did it we know who did it um and obviously iran is being blamed uh for this so well, rightfully so i would say though it is, yeah this is iran um i mean it's not directly iran but it is it is by iran's support you know i mean yeah. very i mean you can't be 100 percent sure but very very likely okay i mean the houthis didn't the houthis were not I mean, just a few years ago, it would be unimaginable for them to be able to do anything like this, right? It's only with Iran's support and probably, 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 like very, very likely with Iran's blessing that they did anything like this, right? Uh, right. But that's not enough for Saudi Arabia. Like, okay, so the question is, so I don't know if people know how much people, how much our audience knows about any of this. The Houthis are Shia, Iran is Shia, Saudi Arabia is Sunni. Iran's proxies in the region are all Shia, mostly Shia. Um, so this is a, this was an, uh, you know, easy alliance to make for Iran to be able to attack the U.S. Saudi Israel bloc, right? So Iran is building a Shia empire in the whole region, right? And the main force against that is United States, and the United the, with the and with the block that it is a the block that the United States and Saudi uh, has created against Iran is Saudi Arabia and Israel and the United States together, right? There are some other countries like Egypt also, but not that they're not as committed. Right. They're not as committed as these three against Iran's uh, empire building. Um, but the pro the thing is that you know iran the the weak the easiest target right now among all these three is saudi arabia because they have they have all this you know oil you know pipelines all these facilities right there and it's just so, i mean now they've proven how easy it is to, to target them i mean they just had a few drones and they managed to cause so much chaos um and it's just, I think Iran is just showing how vulnerable Saudi Arabia is right next to them, right? I mean, this is, this seems to me like it's a warning to not to go war to, not to go to war with Iran. Because if they could do this with just a few drones, they're just trying to show like how, imagine how, what we were going to do if we actually go to war. Like we're going to basically halt the entire world's economy because we have all this oil right here. And this was just right. a, this was just a few drones, right? Imagine if we just bring this was just a Houthis, right? <laughs> the, this was just a Houthis. Imagine if we bring in the entire Iran's military force, right? Like <laughs> it would be a, this is something that nobody could recover from. Um, yeah. And and also the timing of this was very strategic because this was right before Saudi Arabia's second attempt to bring uh, to take Aramco. Uh, for an IPO, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know how much people know about these things, so I don't know how much explanation I need to do. But Aramco is the, you know, the the company where you know produces does all all the oil production production in Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia is desperate for cash right now, uh, so they need to sell do a you know IPO on that and sell shares from the, that company. Uh, to be able to raise money uh, to do because Mohammed bin Salman has this uh, vision to uh, improve Saudi Arabia's ec uh, economy by year 2030 and they, uh, they keep delaying the IPO uh, but every t every time they delay it is the 
they take a major hit because the next valuation of their company it becomes lower and lower. But here's the thing: a lot of people think like this hit on Saudi Arabia's oil facilities is going to bring is going to create a major spike in oil prices. But the thing is that you, we saw a major uh, spike in oil prices, but it, it did adjust itself because that, because people can the investors could understand that first of all you have a lot of oil reserves, second of all. At some point, you're going to be able to fix all of this, and you're going to be able to export oil again. And you know, if you look at the valuation, the, the cash flow is going to eventually be the same, even if you have a, a hiccup right in the middle. It doesn't matter because you, the cash flow is going to still be the same. But what this does is mostly hurts Saudi Arabia's IPO because now, when they want to sell this company, when they want to sell the shares. They have to calculate this extra risk. They have to, when they discount the future cash flows that they could get out of Aramco, they have to adjust the valuation because it's going to get it discounted by a higher risk factor, right? And this is going to really reduce the amount of money that Saudi Arabia could get out of Aramco. So this is was per the timing was absolutely perfect to make the maximum damage to Saudi Arabia, right? Because I think they, right. were, they, I think they were trying to go public with that uh, in November. So this was right. Bef this is right before, and I think they might actually now delay it a little bit more to be able to show the world that they they have. But by the way, this was such an embar such a huge embarrassment for Saudi Arabia. They have bought billions of dollars worth of defense for for exactly these, and they bought it from from United States, right? And they and all and none of that managed to stop a very very cheap drones, right? Compared to all the money that they had spent on defense it didn't stop a few drones just they just walked right in just made a whole bunch of mess and that was it right that's and, insane yeah, yeah so i mean you know iran has mastered the art of asymmetric warfare right um and and and, and, I, and a lot of people say you know iran might have done saudi arabia a favor because these the saudis are they're delusional about their abilities they thought like when they went when they went to yemen they thought that they could the war this is a three-week thing like they could get this could go right in um you know and finish everything in three weeks and now we are more than four years into war and they still haven't not only they didn't defeat the houthis the houthis are now crossing the border into saudi arabia like the, without all the military might that the saudi arabia is supposed to have right so that's so embarrassing <laughs> But now, but even even after that, they didn't learn the lesson. They want to go. Saudi Arabia keeps wanting to go to war with Iran, right? They feel like, well, United States will back us up. Let's go. Let's go to war with Iran. Uh, and now I think they're scared because now they say like, if they manage to do this with a few drones with us, what will happen to us if we go to war with Iran? So maybe Iran. Some people are suggesting that maybe Iran did Saudi Arabia a favor by showing them how disaster, what a big disaster it would be to go to war with them, um, and maybe they saved them from going to war. Anyways, but I could talk about like this is something that I could talk about for hours, and I'm going to try to stop myself right now. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, but the top. Did you have any questions about this, Ali? I not not, a, not any questions, but I do just want to say one thing really quick. I I still think that this. Um, this whole situation and Trump's reaction to it proves even more that he's itching to go to war. Oh, uh, I disagree. Okay, so this is what's happening. <laughs> okay, so this is what's happening with Trump. Trump is in a very difficult situation right now with Iran, okay? Because Iran took a hit at the block that, you know, you know the block with the United States is part of, like the Saudi, Israel. So this is, by the way, just five years ago, saying, even mentioning Saudi Arabia and Israel are in the same block was... People will be like, what the, like, it seems like we're in Twilight Zone right now, right? But yeah, apparently yeah. they're on the same side now uh, against Iran. But, um, but, tr okay, so Iran took a hit, um, Iran with, with its proxy, with its proxy, took a hit at a U.S. ally, okay? And this is very difficult now because Trump doesn't, okay, Ali, if they wanted to go to war, this was the best excuse. They would be in war right now, okay? They don't want to go to war. This is like this. This seemed like an open invitation to go to war. <laughs> I don't know. Okay? No, but Trump, Trump, Iran took a bet 
knowing that the United States doesn't want to go to war, okay? If Iran and Iran, they, they're right. The United States doesn't go to want to go to war because they wouldn't. Iran doesn't want to go to war. They wouldn't risk doing something like this if they thought the U.S. had any appetite for going to war. Okay, um, there are people in the United States that want to go to war, and they're hoping for a miscalculation by somebody on one side for it for this to lead into a war okay and they might get that because the things are getting so tense that somebody might make one mistake somewhere and now all of a sudden we have an all right war but Iran's Iran bet on the fact that United States doesn't want to go to war and they made this attack and the and if and there's it's been a week now and there's no reaction to Iran no reaction okay and Iran is looking stronger and stronger. They're like, look, we even took it, we even did a major attack on them, and they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything. And um, and you, so Trump knows that if he goes to war with Iran, it's probably he's probably going to lose the election. His base hates, 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 hates going to war with any country. We saw that what happened when uh, when Trump um, bombed some Syrian, you know, airports or whatever. Um, and the base where his own base went after him, so he knows that he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna lose the election if he goes to war with Iran. So, well, here's but, but but wait, but he knows that he's also gonna look so weak if he doesn't do anything, right? So he knows that Iran just took a major hit at them, and he can't just be like, well, we're not we're not gonna do anything. So they're trying to desperately to see like what can we do that looks very strong against Iran, but we also don't go to war to Iran. So what they're doing is just laughable because they're like they're like okay let's do more sanctions and Iran is like what more sanctions can you do? Sanctions can they, you do? They, <laughs> like they're actually you know what they're doing they're actually renaming some of the old sanctions and they're doing it again and the whole world is <laughs> laughing and like you we already had these sanctions they're they're like oh we're putting these people under sanction and like those people are coming and like we were already under sanction what are you talking about like there's there's not much more sanctions that you could introduce <laughs> to Iran and so the the, the sanctions the san like even some sanction experts are coming out and like yeah this is ridiculous you, you're not adding anything extra here right and the other thing we're doing, doing is cyber attacks all right so sa yeah. more sanctions and cyber attacks and there's and but the fact that that's what they're coming up with shows that they have nothing short of actual war there's nothing else they could do right there's not they yeah. don't have any more tools in their toolkit other than act an actual war and Iran is like trying to call it a bluff on it. Anyways, what what are you saying? I so I don't remember, but I no, still. You, you I, think, oh, what, what I was going to say, what I was going to say was, it's not up to Trump whether or not we go to war. It's up to Congress, right? So he has to get Congress's approval. And yeah. I think that 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 comment that he made, you know, that we're locked and ready um, to fight, was was a, a play on his hand in his mind of how eager he is to go to war because mm. statistically in the United States, if we're in war, he is going to win the re-election. This is because different. Okay, every time, uh, okay, the examples that you have, <laughs> you have like what, 9-11, right? Um, you, you, but the, the reason why those were different was two things. First of all, you had a major well, attack. too. Huh? Bill also. Yeah, Bill but Clinton. you... Uh, okay, Bill Clinton had a lot more on his, uh, like he had the, the economy on his side and all that stuff, right? But the other major war that, you know, first of all, the Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton didn't, okay, that was a war with a whole bunch of other countries as well, right? That looked a lot better, right? But if you look at you, other examples, like if you look at Pearl Harbor or, or after 9-11, you had a major attack on the United States, okay? Of course, people are you know, Americans would at that time be sympathetic to uh, retaliation, right? You don't have that right now. You have what? You, if you go to war right now, you're sending American soldiers to die for Saudi Arabia. For Saudi Arabia's oil, right. well, for Saudi oil, but no, yeah, it's, so it sucks. That is something. That is something that Americans were like, wait, what? Like, if you have okay, if you have something like nine eleven. And then you go to war. People are like, "Yeah, they at yeah they attacked they attacked us. They killed our citizens. Let's go show them, right?" But if you go to war after an attack on Saudi Arabia, people are like, "Wait, our soldiers are dying because because they attacked the Saudis." 
you know so that's yeah. why that's why i think that's different okay that yeah, yeah it's, it's it's yeah and again and then second reason why it's different is because his base is different I don't know. You say his base is different, but I see them so hungry for war. They don't even Trump care space? that it's Saudi. Trump space? Yes, Trump no. space. No, you're talking about neocons. Those are different kind of Republicans than Trump space. Uh, okay. I, Trump space is not does not like war. Trump space is like stay home, stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. We saw that. We saw what happened when they when Trump. Uh, called for a strike on uh, Syrian planes. By the way, technically, Trump does have ways to go to, you know, war without Congress. I mean, he could be challenged, but if he wanted to, he could do it. Uh, he shouldn't, though. Anyways. Yeah, well, uh, no, he shouldn't. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, okay, Christopher. Aaron is saying we bomb our own shit all the time to get people to believe uh, we're under attack. Okay, that sounds like conspiracy level shit. Okay, no. Uh, Christopher that was, that was 9-11, right? Yeah, that's a 9-11 <laughs> truth. No, that's a... Okay, yeah, we're not we're not going to f- um, go into conspiracy theories here. Christopher saying, I'll just come clean for my entire country here since they love to blame others. Basically, the United States did it. Jesus, it, wow, wow, another conspiracy theory. Uh... <laughs> Gary, I won't cry about it. I wouldn't care if Saudi Arabia itself was destroyed. It ought to be destroyed as an enemy of humanity. Um, no, Saudi Arabia should not be destroyed. It should be the government should be changed to something that is good for Saudi Arabia and its people. Um, Michael is saying another in the long line of false flags to push us into war. Wow, heavy conspiracy levels. Uh, no, this was okay. This is not a false flag. This was Iran. <laughs> Jesus Christ, people. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.